All right. I want you to look at number one. And I want us to have the ability to model that with the sine wave. That's what the lesson is today. So let's read it together. An experiment in a wind tunnel generates cyclic waves. They go in cycles. The following data is collected. And so I want you to look at the table of values and know why you can model it with the sine wave. What do you notice about the y values here? That makes it that. So if I ask you, does this go bottom to top, bottom to top, back and forth again? That's what makes it a sine wave. So I wonder if you can tell me what the maximum wind speed is based on the table of values. I wonder if you could tell me what the bottom wind value is. Now, the middle value then would be add them together and divide by 2. <clears throat> You're allowed to use your calculator or your brain. What number is that? Huh? 34. And this does not happen in the real world as we know, right? We went on the website to look at it, sometimes it doesn't. But for this table of values, it matches exactly. All right, what else do I need to know about my data? What's the amplitude? So to find that, what two numbers can you subtract? Do you know another way to do it quickly is right at the beginning, instead of adding, what would happen if you went 56 take away 12 divided by 2? What answer would you get? If you take the maximum and the minimum, instead of adding, if you subtract and divide by 2, what would you get? So if you need to define the amplitude, what would you do? The top, subtract the bottom, and then divide by 2. If I want to find the middle of my wave, I don't subtract. I add and divide by 2, period. How long does it take to complete a cycle? That's bottom to bottom. 56. Does this table start at the middle of the, in the middle of the wave? At what time is it in the middle of the wave? So I have to shift the wave over how many so it starts in the middle. Now, can you write an equation? So you try, then I'll do it. We just already did two examples before this. Can you write an equation that takes this data, right? So what are we going to start with, obviously? Amplitude. What's the amplitude again? 22. <clears throat> how, do I, how do I use the period inside the function. What am I going to start with? 2 pi divided by 56. What goes inside the parentheses? The phase shift, which is 14. And then what's the last part? Oops, I didn't mean to do it up here. So 22 sine 2 pi over 56 t minus 14. And then what's the last part? the middle of my wave, my k, which is 34. Now, use this equation to do what? Estimate the wind speed at what time? So now, you can use Desmos or your calculator. Estimate the wind speed at 70 seconds. Go. You can use Desmos, it's okay. Yeah. What's that? The vertical shift? 
Let V represent the wind speed. Oh, so then we can go V at T. Thank you. Good, good reading. V. All right, let's type it in. Do you have something to type in with, Mr. Pedro? Let's go. Don't wait and just let me give you the answer. So, did you get the same answer I got? Know that you can do this, so on your quiz you can do this, on your quiz makeup or on your exam when you have this, that you're focused in. So, we can model with the sine equation, and then why do we need a model? Models then can predict the future. Yes? So, whether it's 70 seconds or a million seconds, I can plug in and then get my answers. Okay. We're skipping two. That's your homework. Go to three. All right, you're going to need to annotate. Is it in radians or degrees, your calculator? Press the wrench. Yes, we're at number three. Please read it right now. No? Nope. No pencil fighting. Read it and add it. We're at number three right now. Radians. Hey, if you type it in your calculator, you have to have two parentheses after sine. If you only have one, it's only taking sine of the fraction and not everything that's inside the function. So when you type it in with your calculator, we need two parentheses. And then you get the answer. Yay? Okay, we're on to number three. Here's another example of a sine function that can be modeled this way. So first reading, what's the story about? Sunlight. How many hours of sunlight you have each day? The day that we have the most sunlight in 2000 is June 22nd, and the one that we have the least amount is December 21st. So, let's start easy. What's the max of the wave? You can just say 11.24. Hey, what's the minimum? So I try to teach you a quick little formula to find amplitude and the K or the midline, right? You're going to add and divide by and subtract and divide by 2. Go! Michael. So we're going to add and divide by 2. And then I'm going to just call it K. It's our vertical shift. We're going to subtract and divide by 2. Go for it. I need those numbers. Mm -hmm. 
So our amplitude is nine point. It's the other way around. Subtract and add. Our middle of our wave is 9.63. When I subtract them and divide by 2, I find the amplitude. So subtract them and divide by 2. And our amplitude is 1.61. I want you to notice then, I have to. why didn't I write the number down I saw? Because I was thinking if it made sense, right? In terms of the amplitude. So, what else do I need for my equation? I need to know the period. How long is one cycle? How long is one cycle? There are how many days? What else do I need to know? This one's going to be the challenging one. Is the phase shift, right? Yes. Now, to help us with the phase shift, I'm going to take 366 and I'm going to divide it by what number? Do you know why I'm going to do that? It splits it up into quarters, right? So if I divide it by four, so do you know why I divided it by four, right? Because every quarter then makes up that cycle, yes? So the max of my wave is 100 and what date? 172. So what am I going to do with this number to figure out my phase shift? If that's the top of my wave, I want to go back, right? So what would I do with these two numbers if I want to go back? Subtract. So can you subtract 366, subtract 91.5? Or no, sorry, 172, subtract 91.5. So I'm going to go 1. 72 subtract 91.5 and what's my phase shift? 80.5. So now let's write an equation for this. So the equation would be the amplitude which is 1.5 Six one sine. What goes inside sine? The sorry, I should start with two pi over three hundred and sixty six. Then t subtract. What's her phase shift? Eighty point five <laughs> plus nine point six three. Then use this function on March fifth. And so that means t equals zero is what day? t equals zero is January 1st, right? So if I want to know March 5th, what do I need to know? You do have a calculator, right? What day of the year is that? Or actually, you know what? T equals 1 is going to be January 1st, not 0. So what day of the year is March 5th? How would you figure that out? So January has how many days? 31. Use your calculator. Plus, in the year 2000, that's a leap year. How many in February? 29. So now we got 31 plus... 29. Now we're already in March. How many more days to get to here? Five. So what do we got? What number? 
65, go. Plug it in and tell me how many hours of daylight. So we found the number 65 to be March 5th. So plug it in. What answer do you get? Use your calculator. So I'm going to go 1.61. Did you get 9.2 hours? Which makes sense because in March is the equinox, right? Like that's our midline, which was at 9.63. That's sometime in March, right? That's when winter becomes spring, yes? And it's like, it fits the data, yes? Okay, now's a good one. October 7th, what day is that? Think, you should calculate. October 7th. So, to find October 7th, 31 plus 29, how many days in March? How many days in April? In May? In June? July and August, 31. September, 30. And now we're already in October. So, if I add it up, that's 200 and... 81. So plug 281 in. <laughs> Did you get the same answer I got? And again, does it make sense that it's around nine hours? Because when does uh, summer become fall at the end of September, right? So October 7th isn't that far away from the middle of it, right? From the midline? Yeah. When is daylight waxing? Here or here? When is daylight waxing? Waxing means it's in the middle of increasing. March, right? It's waxing. Yeah. And then when is it waning daylight? That one. That one. Yeah. All right, number five. Let's go. I know I'm losing. I, whatever. I'm excited that you get to do something real world, get to model it with trigonometry and try to figure it out. You're going to have to practice and study this weekend. <clears throat> number five. Hey, shh. what is this table of values? What does this have to do about when you're number five? Please? You're in question five reading it. Now what are we modeling that could be modeled with the sine function? We're in question number five. What is it about? What does that mean? That's a big word. Rain. So, are there times when it rains a lot and then doesn't rain much and then rains a lot and then it doesn't rain much throughout the year? So, can you see that in January and December a lot of rain and then in summer that this can be a sine wave? 
All right, here we go. What are we going to do to model this? How will I find the amplitude? And how will I find my midline or K? Now, if I'm looking for my maximum, what number am I going to use for my maximum? 6.06. .06. What's our minimum? And then divide by 2. So can you find the amplitude, please? And our amplitude is 2.945. How do I find the midline with the same numbers? Is I add them. So now we have our amplitude and midline, or K. I need to know the period, and I need to know the phase shift. So look off the chart. What's the obvious period of this function? How long does it take to complete a cycle? Twelve. Twelve. One year, right? And what's the phase shift then? If I went 12 divided by 4, I get what number? Trace. Now, I'm actually starting at the top of my wave, right? Yeah. Sine starts in the middle and goes up. Sine starts when it's waxing, not when it's not waning. waning. So if I decide to go and go, wait a second, I'm just going to go 1 plus 3, so my phase shift is 4. That's in the middle of my wave, but it's not... Uh, waxing, it's waning there. It's going down at that point, right? So you know what I need to do? I'm not going to add that. I need the third quarter. <clears throat> How am I going to find the third quarter? This is the first quarter. What am I going to add? So instead of adding three, what should I do? Add what number would get me to the third quarter? Nine. So... <laughs> So we're going 1 to 12, right? We go 1 to 12. This is, a, this is the top of my wave. And then in the middle, at 6, is the bottom of my wave. If I pick in the middle of the wave here, it is waning. I don't want that. The sine wave has to be waxing. I need it on this side as it's going up. So what number is there? Nine. Oh, good. So do you see why it's 9? It's in the middle going up to the maximum. <coughs> All right. So, hey, have you ever done a scattergram? Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's going to represent the months. Now, I need a a scale that makes sense. So I'm just going to count up to 6. That's fine. And then on January 1st, I'm going to put an X and approximate where that is on my graph. And then I'm going to go February 2nd and approximate 4.45. And then 3, it's almost the same, a little bit lower. It's just an estimate. Four is two. Five, one point two seven. I'm just reading the table of values and putting an X like a point. June, point five six. July, point seven. Eight point. And again, sometimes you just estimate it to the best of your ability. And we're trying to find a wave that's the best fit, right, for this? 
So can you tell me the equation that can model that wave? So I put the x's down, I drew a wave that kind of goes through most of the x's. Based on the numbers we came up with above, what's the equation going to be? And write it down. If I want to estimate the precipitation on April 6th, April is the fourth month. April 6th is what fraction? So I have to put in a decimal because it's per month. So 6 out of 30 is what? One-fifth. What's that as a decimal? One-fifth. You can use your calculator too. It's 0.2. So April 6th is the same as 4.2. Two, right? April, and then we wrote the day as a fraction. So then you'd plug 4.2 and use your calculator. I figure even if you're not exactly in the mood today to model this, if it's on video when you do want to learn it, it's there. And again, it's not quite a perfect model because it doesn't gradually get more rain and gradually less rain. It either it rains or it it doesn't rain, so it's a little bit trickier in terms of in the middle of it. All right, number seven. This is our last one for today. So you, you do it, then I do it. Number seven, go. All I ask is you do your best to not distract people around you. They're trying to do their best. Number seven. I'm asking you to do your best. We don't have a lot of time left, but we have enough to write an equation based on the data. And can you do a little scattergram and draw a little wave over the scatters? What's the first two numbers you should look for in the table of values? The maximum and the minimum. Go.
Do you see the wave that you are creating, right? So using the numbers, the amplitude you subtract and divide by 2. That's 18.5. The period we're going to add, not the period, sorry, the K, the vertical shift, the midline, we're going to add and divide by 2. Again, that's the midline or the vertical shift. So the midline is 56.5. Our H and our period. The period's obvious. It's 12 months. Our H, if I divide that by 4, it gives me quarters, right? So every quarter something happens. Either the middle, the top, or the bottom every quarter. So if I add 3... So I'm going from 1 to 12, right? If I add 3 and I say, okay, that's right there in the... Does that get me where it is waxing or waning for the middle of my wave? Right? That's what we want, right? It's increasing in the middle of increasing. So 4 is a good number. So our phase shift is going to be 4. So then, can you put the equation together? <laughs> and again, the good news is you have even numbers, and I have a video for the even numbers, right, that you can practice with me to be able to get better at this. This is where we have to have math go to, right? It has to be the ability to read, to apply, right, what we're learning to something. But we can't apply something if we don't have the skill to apply it. So if we have to spend all this time on skill, eventually we have enough skill to say, okay, can I now apply it? So did you write your equation down? I'm going to wait. I want to make sure that everyone's had their chance. You found the amplitude. Max, subtract, minimum, divide by 2. You found the period. Huh? How long does it take? 12. The phase shift. To start in the middle of a waxing wave. Right? So the easiest way to find that phase shift, if we start at the bottom or top, is to take the period and divide by 4, and then it breaks the wave up into quarters, right? And we're trying to figure out that first quarter. So we're going to add 3. So our phase shift is at 4. So we're in the middle of the wave. And then can you put it all together for your equation? So I'll wait again. So, did you write down 18.5 sine, I'm just going to do two parentheses here, 2 pi over 12, and then t minus 
4. And then we're going to add 56.5. So these are the numbers we all used inside. 4, 12, 56.5, and 18.5. And that's it. That was the lesson for today. All right, Mr. G Math, over and out.